Thank you, Jesus, that you want to come to us as a baby, vulnerable and human. May we carry your presence into the world, sharing your hope, peace, joy, and love. Trusting in your powerful name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, family. 
Now would you join me in our call to worship? All of our responses will be found on the screen. And so let us join our response and call to worship. We come from a world in darkness and found Christ's light. We come from the world of busyness and work weariness into God's strength and hope. We come from a world that is asleep. Strengthened by the Spirit, we come to awaken our souls and watch for the coming of Christ. Amen. And our first song is uh, number 133, O Come All You Faithful. Uh, you can find all the words and music on the screens. Uh, so don't worry if you don't have a hymnal uh, in your view. Let us stay together and sing hymn number 133.
we often turn from fear rather than joy. Forgive us for allowing our fear to be Amen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Shine upon us this Advent season so that we may be restored unto you. Guide us into your time as we call upon your name, hear our prayers, and give us life. And now we pray that you would hear us in these moments of silent prayer. Amen. And now may our God make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all. Christ promises to strengthen our hearts in holiness so that we may be blameless before our God. Alleluia and Amen.
through 14, but as you guess, and I'm not going to read this gospel lesson, this is going to be minus from the uh, Charlie uh, Brown's Christmas special, who's going to tell us what Christmas is all about, Brady. Everything I do turns into a disaster. I guess I really don't know what Christmas is all about. Isn't there anyone who knows what Christmas is all about? True, Charlie Brown. I can tell you what Christmas is all about. Life's sweet. And there were the same country shepherds, abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them. The glory of the Lord shall round about them. And they were sore afraid, and the angel said unto them, Fear not. For behold, I bring you tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in the manger. And suddenly there went with the angel, a multitude of the heavenly host praising God, and saying, Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace, good will to our men. That's what Christmas is all about, Tribe And then Linus has a way of reading it better than I ever could. Amen. Would you please uh, remain seated and we'll sing Away in the Manger, verses 1 and 2.
may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable and pleasing in your sight. Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, we finally made it, y'all. I wish you all a very Merry Christmas. I know that things have been difficult for all of us this last year, especially difficult for many of us during this time so I have Christmas. So I hope that all of you will get to spend some time with your loved ones over the next few days and just some, take some time to relax. As the Advent wreath lighters have been reminding us now for four weeks, remember to take a deep breath. As I look back over the last month, I keep wondering to myself, why is everything about Christmas always so busy and complicated? Why do we do this to ourselves? As a child, I have fond memories of Christmas being a magical time with cookies and fun movies and time with family and lots of presents. And now as I've grown older, I realize how Christmas has always been a hectic and busy time. There's shopping, going from store to store, or even stress, more stressful is ordering things online and not knowing if they're going to be ready by Christmas Eve. And then there's the worrying about everything else. I, I have elaborate dinners with family and friends who attend. You know I'm a big fan of Hallmark Christmas movies, but even those movies put pressure on us to make everything perfect, right? Because everything always ends up perfectly good at the end of one of those movies. And they make Christmas seem so effortless. Then there's a cat that gets into the Christmas tree, the dog that eats the food that's too close to the counter, the baby that gets sick. I remember one year I was responsible for the turkey in a corn casserole at a, 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 when I was interning in Champaign at a church. My turkey drippings had dropped in the oven burner and they were catching fire as they hit the burner. Uh, I got that put out, I got that taken care of, I got the corn casserole into the car, and it promptly fell on the floor of my car. Oh, and by the way, before getting to my car, I dropped a bottle of wine in the parking lot. Anybody ever had an experience like that before? I literally just, I was 25, 26, I just had a pity party in my truck. I, I just, I'm like, you just gotta throw up your hands at some point and just go, come on. Things, you know, could have been so much worse. So I ask you though, why do we do this to ourselves every year, right? We get busy and busy with food and parties and planning and shopping. It's, it's stressful and it's worrisome and and all, everything is supposed to be merry and bright and fun and relaxing. So let us all just take one quick deep breath in. All shall be well. I think it would do all of us some good to remember that the first Christmas didn't go perfectly either. I can't imagine that when Mary and Joseph set off on their trip that they envisioned staying with the animals because there was no guest room available. And I imagine that Mary wasn't particularly thrilled at first when all these shepherds show up right after she gave birth. And I can't even imagine giving birth, let alone giving birth in the first century. No doctors, no hospitals, no good pain medication, just a lot of midwives and community members helping, a lot of yelling, a lot of worrying. It was messy and scary for Mary and Joseph that first Christmas. And I, as much as I love the way in the manger, I have to believe that Jesus cried on occasion that night. <clears throat> it was scary for Mary and Joseph because of the high infant and maternal mortality rates back then. But despite all that pain and all that worry and all that stress and anxiety and everything that went wrong, Jesus is still born. 
Jesus was born a healthy baby boy, and the rest of history would be changed forever. So, despite all that could go wrong, or in spite of all of our planning, all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well. Join me in Lord 27. The truest, deepest part of Christmas is not about the perfect dinner, or getting the perfect gift, or all the trimmings, or having everyone around your dinner table. We get the heart of Christmas when we celebrate the fact that the Creator of heaven and earth came down to us in the form of Emmanuel, God with us. The heart of Christmas is that we are not alone in a world of darkness and stress and anxiety. And I don't know about you, but I sure need to, to hear that today. With all the stress and anxiety going on in our community and in our lives. As I reflect upon all the stress and anxiety and worry and preparation we put ourselves through every year, the more I realize that I think we need that the things that bring me the most joy in Christmas aren't the things that went smoothly. I love that I can look back on times when things didn't go well and laugh. I love to tell the story now to my nieces and nephews about me sitting in a parking lot just just having a pity party. A grown man just wanting to kick things and throw things and maybe even say a few words I shouldn't have. But now I tell that story and I laugh. As I get older, maybe maybe wiser, that's for uh, history to tell. The things that I cherish both from Christmas are the smiles of, of my nieces and nephews. The laughter that is around the dinner table. One good thing about this pandemic, there's not much, is that my sister in California, my brother in Florida, and my other sister in Wisconsin, and me in Illinois, can still get together at 6 p.m. And, and have the kids show us what they got on Christmas, thanks to Zoom. Things aren't perfect. I wish they were. But we can take time to celebrate, to focus on the things this season that bring us joy, and to worry less about making things perfect. So tomorrow, as we gather with our loved ones, whether far or near, I encourage you to remember the true reason for the season, which is that God came down to earth to bring all of creation hope, peace, joy, and love. And that that love is eternal. And that the good news is that that love is for all of creation. For God so loved, what? The whole world. God loves us. We are not alone. So eat your meals. Allow yourself to simply be present in the moment. Sing carols if you enjoy singing carols. Watch Elf or A Christmas Story or or what Charlie Brown's Christmas special, or whatever brings you joy tomorrow. Take time to just relax and to be in the moment. And then when Christmas is over, that's when we get to do the work of Christmas. Because don't forget that the 12 days of Christmas actually start tomorrow and go through January 5th. As the poet, author, and civil rights activist Howard Thurman wrote, when the song of the angels is still, when the star is when the sky is gone, when the kings and princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flocks, the work of Christmas begins to climb the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nation, to bring peace among the people, to make music in the heart. And that, Charlie Brown, is what Christmas is all about. May you all have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And to God be the glory now and forever and always. Amen. Amen. This is a video that uh, Jane Rutledge found for me, and it's a few. It's, I, oh, Holy Night is my favorite song. This is a, a, a song by the, the musical group Gentry. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you.
celebration, we take time to give a portion of that which we receive uh, to God. Gener generously have you received, and generously you have given. There are plates uh, found around the sanctuary. Uh, you're invited to uh, drop your offerings there at any point. Uh, and if you're watching online, please feel free to send your tithes and offerings directly to Mickey Alone. And now I invite us to stand as we sing the doxology.
you're watching on Facebook to get your community stuff ready. Um, if you have it already. This is Christ's table. This is not Pastor Andy's table. This is not First Presbyterian Church's table. There are no qualifications to come here. There is no special secret code uh, to come here. No decoder ring you need. All you need is to come. This is Christ's table, and all are welcome to gather around this table, and there's always room for one more person. So come, whether this is your first time here, or come, whether this is your thousandth time here, for all are welcome to gather around this table. Let us pray. God of grace and glory, we thank you that you've gathered us together tonight on this sacred and holy night. To worship the birth and or to celebrate the birth of your child. Lord, may we celebrate and gather as we uh, gather as families to, to worship and praise your holy name and to remember why, why you came to be with us to show us a better way to live. As we celebrate around this table, we remember the reason why you came, Lord, and the reason why you died. And Lord, we pray that you will pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon this bread and this cup, that they may be for us your body and your blood. All this we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who taught us to pray together, each in our own traditions, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, I will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Friends, family, loved ones, it was on the night that Jesus was betrayed. He took the bread on the table and he broke it and said, This is my body which is broken for you. Take this, eat this, all of you, in memory of me. And then he fed his disciples. And it was after supper he took the cup on the table and he filled it with the wine on the table and said, This is the cup of the new covenant sealed in my blood for the forgiveness of sin. Drink this, all of you, in memory of me. For as often as we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we proclaim Christ's life, death, and resurrection until he comes again in glory. Each of you, upon entry, should have received a cup and a little baggie with a piece of bread. You're invited now to eat the bread and then drink your cup.
invite you now to, as we continue to pass your candle, let us stand together and sing Silent Night.